ان الحمد لله احمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا انه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدى هدي محمد صلى الله عليه واله وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله كل ضلاله في النار اما بعد the topic as you know it is the ingredients of happy marital life because in islam the family is the building unit and block of the community so if the family is a strong then community will be strong the umma will be strong that's why we need to work hard to make our marital lives so successful because there are alarming statistics and figures about the rate of divorce not only among muslims even among the non muslims among the muslims <coughs> the rate also is high in some countries marital disputes the rate of khula etc and that is because the muslims families are not living their lives according to the deen so when the deen is taken away from your life then your life will be miserable you'll have a lot of problems and happiness will depart in america for example the percentage of the divorce is 48% in germany 35% for the category those who are below 25 years in europe in general and america 62% Arab countries 20%. So these are alarming figures which means that the families are in bad shapes. The stable family if the family is a strong stable it will produce strong generation a generation that will carry the message will carry the deen because if a child grow up in a family that has what he hears every day problems shouting mother and father they are fighting all the time child goes to school all these quarrels and fights are echoing in his mind or her mind so naturally that will affect the upbringing of the child are you following okay <clears throat> allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning us in the in the quran in surah an-nisa ayah number 1 يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها 
وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء او مان كايند نوت اونلي مسلمز او مان كايند اتقوا ربكم fear your lord الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده he created you from a single soul وخلق منها زوجها and created from that for that soul its mate وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء and he produce from both of them a multiply or multiple a great multitude of men and women of men and women also Allah says surah ar-rum ayah 21 wa min ayatihi an khalaqa lakum min anfusikum azwajan litaskunu ilayha wa ja'ala baynakum mawaddatan wa rahma so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying also that among his signs that he created for you from yourself mates litaskunu ilayha so that you find second peace of mind wa ja'ala baynakum mawadda wa rahma and he placed between you in your hearts affection and mercy and this is true you find that mercy and affection between a husband and wife a woman you didn't meet her before the moment you sign the wedlock you feel she is part of you this is this is the miracle this is a sign from Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us about this sign that it is one of his signs ayah that he created from you for you mates, humans like you, لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا That you find second, this peace, serenity, calmness. A husband, he works, he's the one, he's the bread gainer, he's the one who looks after his family. throughout the day so when he comes back home he's totally exhausted so he's expecting his wife to receive him to make the atmosphere cozy at home not that he meets him with all her problems are you following She receives him that she already finished everything, all her daily chores. She took a shower. She is now waiting for him. This is the true Muslimah. This is the true Muslimah. The Muslimah who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because she knows by doing this, she is obeying her Lord. And you know what the Prophet ﷺ said? إِذَا صَلَّتَ الْمَرْأَةُ خَمْسَهَا When a woman prays her five prayers. وَصَامَتْ شَهْرَهَا And fast her month, Ramadan. وَأَطَاعَتْ بَعْلَهَا And obeys her husband. وَحَصَّنَتْ فَرْجَهَا and saves her private part. قِيلَ لَهَا دْخُلِي الْجَنَّةِ مِنْ أَيَّ بُوَابَهَا It will be said to her, she will be told on the day of resurrection, go and enter the Jannah through any one of the eight gates. This honor was not given to the men, but given to the women. If a woman fulfills these conditions, all the gates of the Jannah are open for her. And every angel, gatekeeper, is calling her, come, come, through this gate or that gate. When she fasts Ramadan, prays the five prayers, obeys her husband, and saves her honor, her chastity.
So second, Allah called the wife, she is your second. She is your garment. You are their garments and they are your garments. And we know what the garment does. The garment covers my nakedness. So a man is in need of a woman and a woman is in need of a man. Allah also says مِن كُلِّ شَيْءٍ خَلَقْنَ زَوْجَيْنِ اثْنَيْنِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ From everything we created things in pairs. Everything. You find male, female. Negative, positive. Electron, proton. Everything, too, in the creation. Our beloved Prophet وسلم, he said, addressing the youth, Ya ma'ashar al-shabab, man istata'a minkum al-ba'a fal yatazawaj. O youth, male and female, Whoever can afford getting married, do so. Because Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he wants us, he wants this ummah to multiply. To multiply, to have many children. Not one and two, huh? And you find some, they say, you know what is more important, the quality, not the quantity. <laughs> All the rules of management, they apply. No. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he wants us to have as many children as we can. That's why he said, Tazawwaju al-walud al-wadud. Marry those women who are prolific. Prolific. And they are of loving nature. Prolific that one who can give many children. So the ulama, they said, how can I find out she's a girl, virgin? How can I be sure that she will, she's going to be prolific? So they said, you see her sisters, you see her mother. So if this, mashallah, her sister has, mashallah, 10 or, huh? her mother, the same thing. So naturally, she will be also like them. Is this clear? So here the Prophet Sallallahu he said, because I want you to outnumber the nations on the day of resurrection. So here he is encouraging the Muslim youth to get married. And abstaining from the marriage is against the teachings of Islam. Or delaying it. You should not delay the marriage. The sooner the better. Especially for a woman. Because a woman doesn't have much chance. You have up to 40. Then, monopause. Yes, that's the reality. You have a, a limited number of eggs. And every month you lose one. A time will come when the ovary is empty. No eggs. So that's why you need to get married as soon as possible. To have children. Don't say I have to finish my degree and all that stuff. <laughs> because then the husband will be the certificate. This, not the, <laughs> okay, because back home, I don't know what is the situation here. Back home. <coughs> the, the brothers, they come and say, I want to get married. Okay, what's the age? Okay, 16, 17, 18. Yeah. Tell them, we have sisters in 20s and 30s. Oh, no, she's like my mom. 
Okay? And this is, this is a fact. And then you will be suffering. You will be suffering. You see your, your friends with their children and see they are happy and you are eating yourself. Because you wasted your life span. And families, the families should help their daughters. They should help them. And I want you to get rid of this. Oh. That, oh, prep, uh, arrange marriage. I don't want my family to arrange the, marri arrange marriage for, the marriage for me. No, who said that? This is the, this is the norm. This is the norm. Yes, no one will force you. No one will force you to marry this man, but your family will help you. That's because in Islam, the girl cannot go and date and look and go to the website and chat and all that stuff. So the family, they play this role. As Sayyidina Umar, you know, that he offered his daughter Hafsa, right? Hafsa was a widow. Or a widower, a widow, and uh, he came and asked Abu Bakr to marry her. Abu Bakr kept quiet, radiallahu anhu. Then he came to Sayyidina Umar, uh, to Uthman, and he refused. Then a few days later, the Prophet ﷺ proposed and marry her. Then Sayyidina Abu Bakr came to Sayyidina Umar and said, are you upset because I didn't accept Hafsa? He said, of course. What do you think? He said, the reason I didn't accept your offer because I heard one day the Prophet ﷺ mentioning Hafsa. And he said, what did Hafsa do after the death of her husband? And said, no, Abu Bakr, he knew the Prophet ﷺ very well. So he said, I felt that he is uh, thinking of marrying her. So this is our history. And the story of the famous story of Saeed ibn, uh, ibn Musayyib, Imam of the Tabi'een, who had a daughter, uh, Alima, the Amir al Mu'mineen, Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, he proposed and asked the hand of Saeed's daughter for his son and Saeed refused said no sorry I will not then one of his students in his class his wife died his wife died so he missed him he, he was the student was not there for a few days so he went and knocked on the door the student opened he said why are you, are you not coming anymore? He said, you know, my wife died and I have uh, uh, daughters, so I have to look after my daughters. So Saeed ibn Musayyib, he went back to his house and asked his daughter, do you want my daughter the pious husband? The righteous husband? The girl accepted. He came back with his daughter and the witness. He knocked again. He opened. He said, do you want to get married? He said, who will accept me? He said, my daughter. Hmm? And he got them married. So when your family, they suggest to you and that there is this family, they are good, the, the boy is nice and that. But the family, they should do their homework, okay? They should find out really about the, the son and uh, the man and... So when they find out he is good, then the girl should think about it. Not that I have to choose by myself. See the boy, talk to him, he will talk to you, as you know, in the presence of the mahram, etc. So the families in Islam, they help their uh, sons and daughters to get married. Uh, a story happened in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, father was always observing watching this young man 
and one day he said, come, we'll have tea. So they went. While they are sitting in the sitting room, the girl came, it is planned, with the tray carrying tea. So the boy, he's pious, like just he put his head down, embarrassed. So the father said, no, no, it's, it is not a mistake. Just raise your head and have a look. Do you want to marry her? The boy, <laughs> his face went, you know, red, black, many colors. <laughs> Embarrassed, blushed. This is, this is it. The, the, the pious boy, the righteous, or the righteous girl, her face will blush, right? Come red. Haya, haya. Today the girls know, daddy, uh, he's the one, I can't live without him and all that stuff. Okay? So, so the boy said, uncle, I'm still in the Sharia college, I haven't graduated, I don't have accommodation. He said, I know about that. This is the key for the flat. Okay? And this is the key of the car. I'll give you a car and a flat. Do you want the girl? <laughs> I said, yes. He got them married. Now the question is, listen, my dear sisters. So this father, he loves his daughter or doesn't he? Of course he loves her. So he is buying her happiness. He wants to make sure that his daughter will be living happily. So the marriage in Islam. So, my dear sister, don't say I have to finish my uni, the university degree and all that. So, when a husband comes, accept. And we know the hadith, when the Prophet وسلم, a group of the Sahaba, they came to his household, and they asked about his ibadah and when they were told about what he, the Prophet ﷺ, uh, would do at home, they said, yeah, a little from the Prophet is enough, so we have to do more than the Prophet. So much so that one of them said, I will uh, play the Hunayn, the other one he said, I will not break my fast, the third one said, I am going to castrate myself so that I will not get married. So the Prophet ﷺ, when he, uh, the news reached him, he said, I fear Allah more than anyone among you. I pray and I sleep. I fast and uh, I break my fast. And whoever has not such stride with my way, he's not from me. I want to go and study the deen, so this will delay the marriage. No, don't do that. Or, that you give priority for learning over the marriage. Get married first. Because now we are going, inshallah, to mention these, the elements or ingredients for mm, the happy marital relationship. There are certain things should be taken into consideration prior to the marriage, before the marriage. These things that we should take care of them before the marriage, number one, is the right selection, the right choice. You choose the suitable partner. So the man chooses the righteous, the religious girl, and the, the woman also. So... Don't be deceived by the looks, huh? Eh? Oh, he's so cute. Mm. He's nice. No. You should find out about his manners, about his akhlaq, his uh, character. Is he hot temper? Is he gets angry quickly? Is he stingy? Doesn't spend. Hmm? Or generous. 
See, because when the uh, a woman Sahabiya came to the Prophet Sallallahu and she said, Oh Prophet of Allah, three of your companions, they propose to marry me and I'm confused. Choose for me one of them. He said, Who are they? He said, Muawiyah, Nabi Sufyan, Abu Jahan and Osama. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, Muawiyah is a poor fellow. He's very, very poor. He doesn't have money, so don't marry him. So if a brother is in the dole, don't marry him. Okay? Yes. You need a man who will support you and look after you. But he is half of the Quran. Are you going to eat Quran? So... The Prophet ﷺ said, don't marry Muawiyah. Though Muawiyah was one of the writers of the Wahi. The second one was Abu Jahm. Don't marry him because he beats the woman. So if a brother is known, temperamental, that will discredit him, disqualify him. So if the people ask you, what do you think of this? He said, no, 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 please. If you love your daughter, don't get her married to this man. Because he beats the woman. Are you following? And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is our example. He never in his lifetime, never beat any or hit any of his wives. Never. Never. And he is the one who understands the Quran better than anyone. And he is the one who said, because a group of women came complaining to the Prophet Sallallahu that their husbands beat them. So he addressed the Sahaba and said, those who beat their women, they are not the best among you. Okay. So the first thing, is that you choose the right partner. We know that girls, mashallah, they really, they, they want to get married. But don't choose anyone. Don't choose anyone. Choose the one who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have a saying in Arabic, don't fast and break your fast with an onion. Something cheap. So be patient. And inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you with a pious partner. So here, the Prophet ﷺ is telling us about choosing your partner, husband to be or wife to be. The husband to be, the Prophet ﷺ said, إِذَا جَاءَكُمْ مَنْ تَرْضَوْنَ دِينَهُ وَخُلُقَ فَزَوُّجُوا Okay, when someone comes to you proposing and you are satisfied and happy with his uh, deen, with his uh, uh, practice of Islam and his character, his akhlaq, then get him married. So he said, he said here the Prophet ﷺ in the hadith, which is in Bukhari, he said a woman normally uh, is sought or uh, her hand is asked uh, for marriage for four things, either her beauty or her wealth or her uh, nobility, her family. He said, get the one who is religious. Marry the one who is religious. So you should not be deceived because she, she is so beautiful. But she is not practicing the deen. She is not practicing Islam. She is not wearing hijab. She is... So don't marry her. Otherwise your life will be miserable. Okay. Or because she is wealth. She is wealthy. So you are after the money. Don't do that. Or because she is from such noble family. 
she is the daughter of so and so. But there is no deen. Don't marry her. So marry one who has the deen. Fadfar be that deen. The one who has the deen. The religious girl. The one who fears Allah. But this doesn't mean that we sh should not look also for beauty. Okay. But beauty lies in the eye of the beholder. Okay. What you think is not beautiful, I, I, to me, is beautiful. So there are different tastes and different uh, people that have different judgments about beauty. And the most uh, important is the beauty of the substance, right? Because the, the facial looks and the uh, uh, apparent looks, they will go, true or not? Yeah. Soon there will be wrinkles and all that. So what is more important is the substance, the heart. So she should not be deceived. But if she is, mashallah, beautiful, religious, mashallah, from good family, nur ala nur, mashallah. This is something beautiful. Okay? But the criterion that should, the deen should have the top priority. Is this clear? The same thing for a woman, for her husband. She should look for the one who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is first point. When we make the right choice. Number two, seeing the one whom you are going to marry. You should see your wife to be. And here, you know what? There are two extremes. You know that? Two extremes. The Muslims, they went, some Muslims, they do not allow you to see your wife to be. Among the Arabs, I, we have that. You don't see your wife to be. And if you ask, they tell you, Aib. Huh? Shame on you. You should not see her. So how can I decide? They, they say, fine. They say, you send your mother, your mother will see the girl, and then she will tell you. Or send your sister. Okay, so you don't see her. You are at the mercy of your mother. It is something just like a black box, wrapped, and you see her only on the night of the wedding. So this is one extreme. The other extreme, they allow you to go with the girl outside and have a dinner and, and they are fiancé. Okay. Two extremes. Islam is always where? Middle. So Islam told us, no, 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 no. You can see the girl in the presence of her family. You can talk to her. And we give you a form of privacy. So where you can talk to each other. We are watching. Okay, but we don't hear the conversation, so you can talk to the girl, she talks to you, and we can give you a chance once, twice, three times. Maybe, you know, the first time they are, they are shy, okay, the girl is, uh, she doesn't feel free to talk, the same thing, the boy is nervous and, okay, we'll give them a chance. So after three times, Make up your mind now. <coughs> so here, the Prophet Sallallahu one of the Sahaba, came to him and he said, I uh, 
proposed to a woman from the Ansar to marry her. He said, did you see her? He said, no. He said, go and see her. Go. Because the Ansar, they have a problem with their eyes. This is common among them. So go and have a look. So this is number two. You have to see your husband-to-be and the husband-to-be should see his wife-to-be. And here also, if you don't want to embarrass the girl, for example, I don't want to come and see the girl and then say no. That will break her heart. So what to do? If there is a chance where you can see the girl without her feeling or knowing that you are seeing her or watching her, you can do that. Are you following? Yeah, you can do that. Providing that your intention is to marry the girl. One of the Sahaba, uh, Muhammad ibn Maslama, he was climbing the trees to see uh, Buthayna bint al Dahak. He wanted to marry her, so he was climbing a tree to look and see her. So much so that the Tabi'een said, What is this? You are a Sahabi. And you are looking at this girl. He said, Why shouldn't I do so? When my beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, when one intends to marry a woman, he should look to what will attract him. Okay? So then he got, uh, her, he, he married her. Okay? So if the maybe uh, something can be arranged, like the girl will come and just as that she is visiting your family or your sister, and you are hiding behind a curtain, okay? <laughs> Something like that. So you saw the girl. So now you know how she looks like. Then you go and propose uh, to her family, etc. The third thing is that we mahar, the dowry, the mahar, and weddings parties. This is an, another problem. Some people, the mahar, the mahar first of all is a must and should be given to the wife. It's not for the family, the parents. It is haram for the parents to take one single penny. This is the money of the woman, for the woman herself. They should tell the girl, this is your mahar, take it. And normally, it is something reasonable. Not something symbolic, five pounds. Or, no, it is something, it has a value. And reasonable at the same time. According to the norm of the community. The norm in the community, what is the mahar? You have to give the mahar to the wife. But we should not go to the extreme, so uh, it is where it, uh, the, which will break the back of the husband. So throughout his life, he is just clearing his debts. So that affects the marital relationship. It affects it. Because now he's just thinking how I am going to pay my debts. So it has to be something affordable. And that is the right of the woman. And the Prophet ﷺ said, those women who have the little sadaq, little mahar, they will have more barakah. More barakah. Also, the weddings. Some people really, they are extravagant. So when it comes to the wedding day, they, it, they put conditions. It has to be in this hall. 
this number of uh, invitees. And uh, the dress of the girl is like this and that. It's many things. No. So we should not. It should not. And especially the mothers, huh? The mother-in-law. She now comes and says, we have to keep the standard. Our neighbors, this what they did. So and so, this how what they did. So we, my lo daughter is not lower than that. No. So we should not be extravagant, and we should not exaggerate. <clears throat> so that is the first thing. That the right choice, the right choice, that you choose the right partner for yourself. Second thing, that the marital rights, my de dear sisters, the marriage is not honey and milk, by the way. The marriage is shouldering of obligations, and because it's about rights. You have obligations towards your wife, the wife has obligations towards you. So here, the marital obligations or the marital rights. And we can categorize them or classify them into three sections or three types. Number one, the rights of the husband over his wife. What are the rights of the husband? First of all, the husband he is the head of the family. Okay? So he is the one who is steering the ship. And if there are two captains in the ship, what will happen? It will sink. The ship will sink. And this is life. There should be only one head. But this head is not arrogant. He is down to earth humble. He listens. He, because we have a problem also among the Muslims. She's only a woman. Don't listen to her. Don't seek her advice. He doesn't know. No. That's not our Islam. Our Islam is different. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We know that uh, on the, uh, the Hudaybiyah when he went with the Sahaba to Mecca to perform Umrah, to the, perform the Umrah, the Mushriks stopped them in Al Hudaybiyah. The Sahaba now they can see the, the Kaaba, and the Mushriks told them, No, you cannot. This year you cannot enter Mecca. You have to come the next year. So, what to do? They are now wearing their ihram. So they have to remove the ihram. So the Prophet ﷺ told them, remove your ihram. The Sahaba, they were reluctant. The Prophet ﷺ is telling them, remove your ihram now, finish. We cannot uh, do the umrah. They were reluctant. Why? Not disobeying the Prophet ﷺ. They were actually waiting. Maybe Allah will send a wahi to his prophet, commanding him to enter Mecca by force. So they were hoping for that. So the Prophet ﷺ got angry, and he went to his wife, Umm Salama. He said, Umm Salama, the, the Muslims will perish. I'm commanding them to remove their ihrams, and they are reluctant. Listen to the wise woman, wife. He said, Ya Rasulullah, don't blame them. They are hurt. But do one thing. Go now outside the tent. Ask your barber to come and to shave your head. That's it. Don't do anything. Do what I'm telling you. So the Prophet ﷺ, he came out, called the barber, started shaving his hair. When they saw that, all of them, they followed the Prophet ﷺ. So here the Prophet ﷺ, he listened 
to his wife, Ummu Salama. So this is it, that you sit with your wife and you discuss the, your, what, your plans, what you are going to, uh, you want to do in the future, all these things. How about the upbringing of our children? What is the, how should we upbring them? All these things you should agree on. This is very important. So then no conflict, no clash. Because this is how we decided to bring up our children. So now if the father is disciplining uh, and the, the, he disciplines the child, the mother should not interfere. Because this will spoil the child. Because then the child, ah, oh, someone will protect me. So he will run to his mother. No, when he comes to you, say, you deserve it. Then the child said, oh, both of them are against me. So he will behave himself or herself. Okay? Even if the father made a mistake, keep it quiet. Then when you are by yourselves, say you did this and this is wrong. And I have to accept it. But in front of the children, we are together. Are you following? Yes, we are together. We don't want to spoil the children. So the, the rights of the husband because he is the head of the family, and Allah has given them, number one, qawama, which means the uh, standing over his family, that means looking after his family, taking care of his family, that is his responsibility. So a woman, and he is the head of the family. Number two, that he should be obeyed as long as he doesn't command you to do something haram. And remember the hadith you mentioned, okay? And if you obey your husband, so you obey your husband as long as he doesn't ask you to do something haram. If he asks you to do something haram, there is no obedience. Sorry. <coughs> A woman came to the Prophet ﷺ, and the Prophet ﷺ said, are you married? He said, yes. He said, so how are you with your husband? She said, I try my best. I try my best with him. Then he told her, take a look, or take care, because he is your paradise and he is your hell. This is in Musnad Ahmad. So he said, take care of your husband. Because your husband either be your hell or your paradise. In other words, he will, if you obey him, this will pave your way to the Jannah. If you disobey him, you are heading towards hellfire. So obey your husband and by doing so you are obeying Allah who commanded you to do that. At the same time the husband also <coughs> has obligations we are going to mention towards his wife. The other thing that you should not allow anyone into his house without his permission. If he tells you, I don't want so and so to come to my house, I don't want this woman to come to my house, you have to listen to your husband. Are you following? Yeah, you have to listen. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, <clears throat> a woman should not fast while her husband is present and should not allow anyone into his house without his permission. So a woman wants to fast Monday. She has to seek the permission of her husband. Thursday, 
this, seek the permission from her husband. Nafil, fast, you have to get the permission. Why? The answer is known. The answer is known. And that's why Aisha anha said, I only may make up my days in Sha'ban. Throughout the year, she said because of the Prophet She is taking care of her husband. So, she doesn't have the time to fast. So when Sha'ban comes, because now the Prophet ﷺ is fasting most of Sha'ban. And many sisters, they use this as, as a proof for, for delaying their siyam. Huh? Say, Aisha used to make up her days only in, in uh, Sha'ban. But Aisha, she mentioned the reason and her excuse. So you should not delay your siyam until Sha'ban. And sometimes they call, Sheikh, I don't have uh, sufficient days or enough days. What should I do? One year you are delaying. One year completely. That's why the Hanabila, Madhab of Hanabila, they're saying she has to fast and kafara on top of that. Why? Because they said she delayed her fast without any excuse. So his, among his rights, that you should not, you cannot fast in his presence without his permission. Also among his rights, that you protect yourself, his honor, his children, his wealth. You should not waste his, his money. Okay, you should, not, you should take care of the kids because it is the responsibility of the mother and the father as well. But you are most of the time with the children. So you have to take care of the children. Educate them, teach them from the beginning, the deen. Before, because behind every man is a mother. The mother is the one who brings you up. And when you read the biographies of the, the, uh, the pioneers, you find there were mothers behind them. The mother of Muhammad al-Fatih, I mentioned this many times, used to take Muhammad al-Fatih, Muhammad the conqueror, the one who conquered Constantinople, to the sea, telling him, Muhammad, see the walls of Constantinople. I want you to conquer there. And he did. 